We're going into Matt Underwood today. Now, the reason why I wanted to go into Matt Underwood today is because I realized I missed an email from somebody. Now, this email was not sent to me. This email was sent to a fan of Zoe 101. And Matt Underwood, I guess, it's a back and forth through emails and this individual, which I'm gonna protect their identity, you know, sent it to me to let me know that this was what was going on. And she wanted me to know that Matt Underwood was still talking poorly about me. Surprise! And it's so funny because Matt Underwood wasn't necessarily always actively bullying me, but he like allowed the bullying to happen and didn't do much about it. And he wasn't also necessarily like the nicest human being, I wouldn't say. But the fact that we're so many years later and he's sending an email where he's talking about me poorly uh, says a lot. So I guess he says here, howdy, sorry I write novels. And boy, oh boy, does Matt Underwood write novels, okay? And so just to date this, it was Saturday, March 20th, 2021. So this was before Dan Schneider was exposed. This was before my protests. This was before the Business Insider article that exposed Dan Schneider in on so many different levels. So just to note this, I have to be super clear with my statements so they don't come across as condescending or misunderstood. And you know what, Matt Underwood? It came off extremely condescending. And, you know, maybe I don't think you were misunderstood. I think it was very clear where you stand. I can agree that TV and movies as a whole industry needs to lay off the desire to make kids seem sexy. I do, however, have a somewhat different perspective on Dan's and Nickelodeon's actions in that regard. I see them as being much lighter about it and actually providing more content with less S-E-X-U-A-L-I-Z-A-T-I-O-N than just about any other network and creator. Lighter. Lighter how? Lighter how, Matt? Matt? Lighter how? Like, as if that's some kind of positive thing, that it's lighter? What do you mean by that? Just curious. Um, okay, so where was I? Yes, the kids wore bikinis, but it's not exactly blank to do so and hasn't been for a while, unless a public interprets it as blank. I do have differing opinions about that when it comes to what Matt Underwood is saying here. Because you have to remember the context. You have to remember the context when it comes to Dan Schneider. In my opinion, Dan Schneider is a creep. Full blown, my opinion, creep. And you know, we, we've obviously, you know, this is all in my opinion, but it's also been other people's opinions. Like, you know, Jeanette McCurdy's book. When we read about Jeanette McCurdy and she talks about the creator, we can all assume who she's talking about. And he was a creep. And so when you look back at a lot of the footage that came out of Dan Schneider's shows in context to what he was like as a person, then these things are different. It's not just a kid in a bikini. It's a kid in a bikini on Dan Schneider's show. Right? It's a kid in a bikini on Nickelodeon, <laughs> which also, in my opinion, Nickelodeon has been extremely complicit when it comes to Dan Schneider's problematic, creepy content. So that's what I have to say about that. But but moving on, let's get back to the email. He goes, the feet thing. This is a huge stretch for me to see it as victimizing in any way because of the circumstances. Feet are both gross and funny at the same time. Are they gross? It's one of those body parts that can be constantly called upon to be either gross or funny. With adults, TV and movies usually go for and to get the funny, raunchy, 
which would have been clearly unacceptable for kids. At least on a Nickelodeon or Dan set, it would be unacceptable. Interesting. Interesting, Matt. So let's break this down for a second. Zoe, yell crash. Crash. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. All right. That's great. Very, Very nice, nice Quinn. A plus. <laughs> or D plus. <laughs> Who wrote the D plus line? And why are we conflating what's the word whatever the hell that was when it comes to a child but yet matt was on that set for that season but he didn't help quinn not be exploited for that scene did you because wouldn't that be something you mentioned in this email that you did see dan schneider and nickelodeon exploit parts body parts of a child that are not kid friendly like you like to call it what are kid friendly body parts i would like to say that this area is not a kid-friendly body part. It's not. And yet no one helped Quinn not be exploited there. And if anything, Chris Massey literally said D+. And I'm really appalled that that scene happened and no one said a thing. Now let me remind you of another episode, Matt Underwood. This was in a season that I was in, okay? So let's pull this up. Now I feel that the clothes for our commercial should be really cool, like funky. I'm down with funky. Okay, so I sketched out a few possible outfit combinations. See? Cool. But how do we buy these clothes? How do we buy these boobs? Yeah, I went a little overboard on those. No, you know who went a little overboard on those? The person who went a little overboard on those was, was Dan Schneider. A grown ass man. And Nickelodeon. Nickelodeon went a little overboard on those not jamie lynn spears not jamie not zoe nickelodeon and dan schneider so there's another time that not a kid-friendly body part was exploited and used matt and that was my season there's also another episode where i pull up a shirt and talk about how this shirt makes me look chesty you like this top it makes me look chesty chesty so there is another time that a not kid friendly body part was exploited by Dan Schneider and Nickelodeon. So I just wanted to remind Matt that wasn't just feet, but since you weren't a girl on the show, you seem to forget what we went through, or at least some of us that are willing to speak out about it went through. So let's move on to what he has to say here. It may seem like a thing to see that feet are referenced so much, but digging a little deeper and it becomes clear that there are few other acceptable body parts to make jokes about with kids. In my opinion, it's actually a pretty respectable thing to do instead of constantly pushing the envelope and using more and more body parts. What? As other networks and creators continue to do. If he always reference ears, would that have been his alleged fetish? Yeah, it depends about how many times he's referencing ears. If he's tweeting about ears, wanting kids to send their ears, you know, putting ketchup on the ears, you know, like, yeah, maybe. If it was ears in the same way that it is toes and feet, yeah, I, I think it might be an alleged fetish for sure. Are ears even funny enough to constantly make jokes about? I don't even know, dude. I don't even know if toes, I don't know if toes are that funny. Ears, sure. I'm sure toes and ears go along this. It depends what you're doing with them. Are you pouring ketchup on the ears? Are you? What are you doing with the ears? Are you doing the same thing with the ears that you were doing with the toes? Because then, sure, I'm think I think you would be able to maybe then spin it the same way that Matt Underwood's trying to spin it. But it's like, dude, to, if it was the same thing with ears, I think yes, I would also have a problem with the ears thing. I don't think it's just. It's be not just because it's feet. It's just any kid's body part that's being done over and over again in a way that really starts to seem like it is an alleged fetish. Also, it makes it seem as though it's like almost like to hyper normalize. Like it feels like Dan Schneider, in my opinion, was trying to hyper normalize his alleged fetish so that children are desensitized to the blank, 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 blank of feet. This is my opinion. 
because you have to remember his audience are children and he chose to make content for children. That's what he chose to do. And it's so much, so many feet. Him tweeting about all of the kids' feet, sharing pics of the kids' feet to a point where it's like he's desensitizing and brooming, brooming his audience of, of children, honestly, in my opinion, to, to not bat any lashes or whatever the, the saying is when it comes to this. When it comes to the exploitation of these children, this body part of a child, which happens to be the feet and toes for, for Dan Schneider. So he had to exploit some party of body part of the children. He had to exploit something when it came to the children. So he chose feet. All right. So so we're continuing on to this email. God, dude, I can't believe he had time to write this email. All right, so hands are off limits due to the adult innuendo of big hands mean... Wait. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Matt Underwood did not say that. Allegedly. Allegedly, Matt Underwood did not say that. Hands are off limits due to the adult innuendo of big hands. You know, Matt Underwood, you really should be... Dan Schneider should hire Matt Underwood as his, I don't know, PR consultant or his manager or, you know, I, I don't know. He he just I feel like he should really he should play a bigger part than just the Zoe 102, you know, Zoe 101 reboot movie, whatever the fuck you want to call it. He has a bigger part to play here. I don't even think Dan Schneider realizes it. But Dan, if you're watching, Matt, if you're watching, you guys should hit up one another. You obviously have more in common than I thought you did. And you might be able to uh, get Dan Schneider to say a statement. You know, when it comes to all of his allegations, maybe you can help construct his response to all of his allegations instead of him having Russell Simmons or whatever the f his name is. Russell Hicks. Russell Hicks, right? Russell Hicks saying his statements for him. So, okay, this is why he's not using hands. Got it, continuing on. Okay, so as far as Alexa thing goes, okay, so here's where he throws in me, which, you know, I'm, I'm honestly used to by now. As far as the Alexa thing goes, I can confidently say she is being a dramatic diva who seeks attention. Thanks, Matt. I am such a uh, dramatic, first of all, it's such a misogynist trope right there. A dramatic diva, what? Me feeling sad about the fact that not only did you all bully me when I was on the show and make me feel like all the time and leave me out all the time, but then fast forward, a reunion happens and you don't invite me once again. So not only was I not invited to the trailer for lunch, Paul Butcher's rap party where he went to everybody in front of me and handed out the RSVP, whatever, invites. And then when he came to me, he's like, nope, sorry, not you. And then went on to everybody else. I was constantly uninvited to things. Now, fast forward, I'm almost 30 years old. We all are. You guys are actually older than me. How old are you guys now? 36? 35? We're all old. And then I'm not invited to the reunion. Yeah, it hurt my feelings. And yeah, I was expressive about it because I held it in for a very long time. And that's my right to. But to call me a dramatic diva, you know what I would say to you, Matt? It's a little bit. No, I'm sorry. It's a huge stretch. It's a huge stretch to call me a dramatic diva. Moving on. I have no problem saying that because I know how hard we work to be her friend growing up. No, you didn't. You guys did not work hard to be my friend. And also, you shouldn't have to work hard to be anyone's friend, honestly, on set. It wasn't like I was making it super hard for you all to be friends with me. I was actually just a likable kid who just wanted to be friends with you all. And none of you really gave a flying <laughs> honestly. So no, that's wrong too. Sean, Chris, and I in particular went above and beyond. No, I'll correct you again. Sean and Chris went a little bit. They did a little, I saw more effort when it came to Sean and Chris to be my friend or to make me feel seen. Sure. I don't know if it was above and beyond but it was normal it was like just making me feel seen and heard being on set year after year you mean two years 
and for years following her release from the show. No, Matt, you never reached out to me, I don't think. After the release of the show, I never heard from any of you. None of you checked in on me. Nope, nope, nope. The only person I actually hung out with after being off of the show was Sean Flynn. So, no. To be her friend and include her, but she behaved then a lot like she is behaving now. What? What? That I was hurt when people hurt my feelings? That I was hurt when I was called names? That I was hurt when I was left out of things that I shouldn't have been left out of? This is where I guess the Jamie Lynn Spears thing comes up, which I'm still very curious who is the one to either lie to Jamie Lynn Spears and tell her that I said this when I didn't, or if Jamie made it up herself. But I'm very curious who told her this, because here he's saying she accused Jamie Lynn of having lice one day, which I never did in my entire life, swear on my life, out of the blue. I've never been able to get that memory out of my head. What memory, dude? What memory? We tried so hard even after that and countless other incidents that you can't name, that you can't mention, and that you have no evidence of, by the way. Her recollections of her time of the show are either flawed or she's outright lying to save face as a majority, majority of humans naturally do. Well, then, maybe you are doing the natural thing that humans do here, and you seem to be saving face. What a stupid argument. It's like, that can be used anywhere, even for this email. <laughs> Dan's credibility went up in my eyes when the investigations in concluded a couple years ago. Had he legit done anything to make a minor uncomfortable of any of his sets, he would have ended up in jail. Full stop. Matt Underwood, full stop? After that investigation happened... Jeanette McCurdy wrote a book where she talks about the creator and how he made her feel uncomfortable. How he made her feel uncomfortable on set. Okay? Full stop, bro. Full stop. And guess what? Dan Schneider's not in jail. Dan Schneider's not in jail. No one even knows where the f Dan Schneider is, honestly. No one knows. He's somewhere. He's somewhere. But he's not in jail. And so, again, here you are mansplaining to this girl fan something you know nothing about. You weren't there. You didn't know. You think an investigation internally within Nickelodeon is going to be able to expose Dan Schneider's creepy behavior that he was doing? Full stop. No. That's not how the industry works, bro. These institutions cover up problematic behavior, crimes, et cetera. They cover them up. That's what they do. But no, you don't care about our voices, right? We're just attention seeking and, or what else? A dr dramatic divas, as you like to call women that uh, speak up for themselves or girls that like to speak up for themselves. So moving on, we legitimately could not go anywhere. Yada, 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 tight ship my ass. Look at that TikTok I just showed. What tight ship? What tight ship, bro? I would never refute an allegation I have no knowledge to base a judgment on. I wholeheartedly hope for some decency to be brought to Hollywood. No, you don't. You don't give a f Matt. You didn't care then. You don't care now. Having said that, I cannot allow myself to dive headfirst into believing any and every allegation I hear. Okay, Ashton Kutcher. I still must maintain a level of credulity because I have to keep in mind that there are two sides to each of these situations. And no matter which side the truth comes from, people will be getting hurt. Wouldn't you want to not hurt the survivor? Are you more worried about hurting the alleged predator and the institution's feelings? <laughs> what, a, what an American you are. You're more afraid of hurting capitalism than you are caring about a child that was exploited on set. That's all I heard there, man. That's personally all I heard. What is that? two people's feelings are going to get hurt. I would rather let capitalism and Dan Schneider's feelings get hurt than the children that were exploited on his shows. People who hurt others need to be held accountable. That includes those who make false allegations solely to benefit themselves. I want to be clear that I'm not giving you my opinion on this to protect Dan. I don't work with him or Nickelodeon and never plan to again. Wait, wait, here's Matt Underwood allegedly saying that he will not work with Dan again, will not work with Nickelodeon, and then fast forward, does the Zoe 102 reboot. 
so what? You never plan to again, not because I don't like him. No, no, of course not. But because I just don't see that being a thing in my future. We're on different paths now. I hate to break the news to you, Matt, but you and Dan are on the same path now. You're defending exploitation of children feet, et cetera. You're on very similar, very similar paths now. So this is one of my favorite parts because Matt Underwood says here that journalists are the ones who are reputable news outlets. They're the ones that we should obviously be putting all of our faith into and trusting them. And so this was before the expose about Dan Schneider came out by Business Insider. His email was prior to that. So what's so interesting about that, though, timeline wise, is that this, though, was also this email was also written before he agreed to do the Zoe 102 movie. So here he's saying that journalists are reputable news outlets and that we should trust them. But when the expose came out about Dan Schneider, he went right into working for Nickelodeon again and never spoke out against him never said he stood with the females that were on Dan Schneider's shows who spoke up against Dan Schneider. He never said a thing. You never went up and beyond and out of your way to make us feel heard or respected. You never admitted that you were wrong about your perception of Dan Schneider, your defense of Dan Schneider. <laughs> Silent. But maybe that's because you're attention seeking and maybe that's because you wanted to be in the reboot on Predator Plus. I don't know. I'm just saying, though, maybe maybe you're a little bit of a diva. I don't know. Maybe just a just a little bit of a diva and and picked P Predator Plus over, you know, standing up for your co-stars that felt exploited on the show that you were on. That I can actually pull up TikTok videos that actually show us being exploited. Matt Underwood. You don't under, understand how journalists, even all the, the obstacles they have to go through to get a story published. So many, so many, because the lawyers, the legal team are in the back pockets of the predators and us survivors have to deal with that all the time when it comes to getting our story heard in publications. It's, it's almost impossible to get press to publish even public court documents about somebody, something that's actually out there for the public. Impossible, can take up to a year plus. So Matt, you don't know what you're talking about. I'm so sorry, Matt, but you do not know what you're talking about. Can you just go away? After reading this long novel, what is my intention? I don't know what your intention is, but you have too much time on your feet, okay? got too much time on your goddamn feet. <laughs> so I don't care about your intention at this point. While I'm hoping you take a few minutes to consider your next actions, are you committed to continuing to press this Dan Schneider? Are you working for Dan Schneider? <laughs> Wait, is Dan Schneider paying you to write this email? Why are you so adamant about protecting Dan Schneider? Are you committed? Do you give a fuck? Who even gives a if this person is committed to Dan Schneider or not? I don't. I don't got that much time on my feet. I don't even have that much time on my hands. I don't have that much time in my head, <laughs> to be honest with you, to even care if someone is digging around when it comes to Dan Schneider. Good. See if you can find more. Let someone find more when it comes to Dan Schneider. Why try to even stop it or hinder it? Let it go. Let it happen. See what comes up. See if more people come forward. Why do you care so much, Matt? Unless you're trying to be in the Zoe 102 reboot. Why do you care so much? Then why didn't you call me up, Matt? Why didn't you call me up after I came forward about Dan Schneider and Nickelodeon in 2019, which is before 2021? You didn't care about the allegations. You didn't come up to me and ask me what I went through or wanted to hear more or cared. And my last piece of advice on this subject, if someone famous tells you they're okay with you continuing to spread an allegation, but they can't provi provide you with any additional info to account for its truthfulness, I would put my bets on them just wanting attention too. You seem to be wanting her attention, that's for sure. P.S. I'm so sorry for the novel. 
I have, I had too much time on my feet. No, I'm kidding. He didn't say that. Uh, if you got this far, you're my hero. I got this far. Am I your hero? <laughs> Am I your hero? Are we all collectively your heroes? <laughs> I think so. I, I honestly think so. I can't believe I had to read this pathetic email, honestly.